Sunday mornings usually find us sitting in a semicircle so that we can see each other, ready to renew our connection and commitment to one another. Our altar is at the center of our space beneath our beacon that lets in the hope of this planet and our glorious sun, but also shines our light out into the world that needs our love and care. On the altar, we have a big wooden bowl which we fill with stones that have come from natural settings. And we have the opportunity to collect a stone from a different bowl. And we use this time to kind of charge the stones with our energy, our hopes and our fears, our sorrows and our celebrations. In the weeks that we're away from each other, I'd like to encourage you to have a talisman, something small that you can carry with you in your pocket or your purse as a physical reminder of your connection to everyone else in this congregation. It could be a stone or a button or a marble or a piece of glass or jewelry. It could be anything. And if you want, you can use that as a replacement for the stones we usually put in the bowl. And when all, is, all of this is through, you can even put that talisman into the bowl with the rest of our blessings. So now I'd like to invite you to hold on to your talisman if you have one already. And even if you don't, just breathe for a moment paying attention to your body, noticing the places of tension and the places of relaxation. See if you can settle into one of those places of relaxation and really focus gently on that and see if the tension can be released a little bit everywhere else as I share your joys and cares. Patrick and Mary McGovern are happy to announce that their daughter, Francesca Thompson, who grew up in this congregation and was married here to Tim a year ago, is expecting her first child. Congratulations to the whole family. We remember the 12,000 plus people who have died worldwide of COVID-19 so far, and the 300,000 or so who have contracted the virus. We pray for them and their families who are grieving their losses and fighting illness in this time of global tragedy. Mindful that only a tiny percentage of those who contract the virus will lose their lives we pledge ourselves to taking care of the sick as best we can. We remain in empathy with those whose lives have been interrupted by the closures and cancellations, the weddings and other rites of passage, the opening nights and award ceremonies, the sporting events and championship playoffs. We look forward to being able to resume life as usual. For these and all the joys and cares shared here and in the comments section below. And all those that remain in the quiet places of our souls. We observe a moment of quiet meditation. Friday was the first day of spring. It's a gentle reminder that despite everything, life goes on. Creation starts anew on schedule. As a prayer, I'd like to offer you this poem. 
called The Enkindled Spring by D.H. Lawrence. This spring, as it comes, bursts up in bonfires green, wild puffing of emerald trees and flame-filled bushes, thorn blossom lifting in wreaths of smoke between where the wood fumes up and the watery flickering rushes. I'm amazed at this spring, this conflagration of green fires lit on the soil of the earth, this blaze of growing and sparks that puff in wild gyration, faces of people streaming across my gaze. And I, what fountain of fire am I among this leaping combustion of spring? My spirit is tossed about like a shadow buffeted in the throng of flames. A shadow that's gone astray and is lost. Amen.